Hey everyone, Mike here. So I had to upload a video for so long due to my studies and other work as well, but here I am today with a brand new video in which I'll show you the latest version of the spot welder me and my father made a couple of years ago. So in the previous video we ran some test welds, we talked about the specifications of the welder, how was it made and gave some tips about welding. In this video we show you the big change we made, enjoy! But before we get there, a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and providing the Spot Weller PCBs as well. For just 5 bucks, you can order 10 prototype PCBs, easy and with a great quality. Just go to PCBWay.com, design your own PCB and order it. Simple as that. Oh, and a big thank you again, because we actually ordered 10 PCBs and they brought us 12, so there's that as well. Thank you. Ok, so right after our PCBs came, I immediately went and opened the packaging, of course, to see our simple creation in a PCB form. So it's not big, it's just uh, 6 cm in width and 9 cm in height, but it was just what we needed for the project. The components of the circuit are very simple, of course the Arduino Nano takes center stage as it did in the previous build of course. We replaced almost every button with a rotary encoder and we used a 20 by 4 LCD which is up from the 16 by 2 LCD we had on the previous welder which gave us actually a lot of space to do what we wanted also we used a DS3231 real-time clock and of course in the end a button along with its 10 kilo ohm resistor which is used to start the welding process you can also see the um, simple design of the photos on the video right now So here's a new look of the welder. Some notable changes are that we made a new battery welding add-on, which uses pressurized air to work, we'll talk about that later, and of course we moved the screen to a different place. Other than that, and some other spec changes of course, the design is the same as the previous one. Now we open the welder and we'll wait for the program to load. Of course the program itself will be available on Hackster as always. Ok, so here we go. We have four lines used here on the screen. The first one indicates the pulse width. Then we can see the number of the pulses. The third line shows the delay between the pulses, of course, if we use two more pulses. And last but not least, we can see the current day and time. Also, here's how the circuit looks inside its enclosure, you can see it right here. So, here are the only two buttons used in the process. So, the green one is the weld button, which, well, as the name suggests, initiate the weld process. And the other one, as mentioned before, is the rotary encoder, which is the most important component of the spot welder, and is actually used to set all values and all the pulses and delays. And talking about setting, in order to change the various options, we must first enter the options mode. So, how do we enter the options mode? It's very simple. We must just push the encoder's button for two seconds, an exclamation point will appear in the top right corner of the LCD, and after those two seconds, we will enter the options mode. So, after that, we will see an arrow blinking, and we can then choose what we want to change. We push the encoder again and then we change that selected value. After we're done with that, to exit options mode we push the encoder for 2 seconds again and it's all done. Now if you noticed, there's something called 1-2 pulse. When we select this, we actually have two pulses, but we can set each pulse's width individually. So this is useful in many cases when you want the first pulse to hit the metal and the second one to melt it so the welding can be done better, at least that's our experience. So the pulses width can be set between 1 millisecond and 9995 milliseconds. And of course, we can also set the delay between those two pulses, which we'll see right now. So the delay between pulses is pretty easy to set. We can choose a delay from 50 milliseconds to a delay of 500 milliseconds to use between the pulses, plain and simple. 
Okay, now we'll try to weld this very small button battery using our new battery add-on which we call the spider's teeth because of the shape it has so it uses a pneumatic cylinder which takes air from our air compressor we have in the back and it works on the one and a half bar so here we try to weld the button battery using the one two pulse setting with the first pulse being 10 milliseconds long and the second one being 20 milliseconds long we set the values and then we'll go to weld the metal as you can see we must position the battery well because the as you can see the teeth went down when we press the switch and, and the battery needs to be in a good position so it can be welded very good now we'll try again and as you can see the metal is welded and we'll check the result right now and as you can see there are no dark spots or anything which you know means that the pulse length is actually very good and when we try to get the metal off you'll see that the metal will rip like that and of course, as uh, you know, that means that it's a very good welding. So the design of the add-on, you know, the spider's teeth, was an idea from my father. And you know he just wanted to make it so that it can weld yeah, of course weld batteries but can also weld the metal at different heights so you can see that when we try to weld uh, that metal now to the circular battery the electrode on the left you'll see right now when we try it you know it will be a little lower than the one on the right you know which you know will be able to weld the metal without missing here you see it in a close-up position like we welded the metal once and now you can see that the left electrode is lower than the one on the right you know and if we try to weld it it will weld it pretty good actually and it will work just like that you know and here we just weld a bigger button battery multiple times to test the add-on actually about three or four just to test how it works here we go no spots not anything and they will stay together forever So, to give you some specs about our build, the welder's theoretical power is at 6 kW using 4 transformers of 1.5 kW each. These are not microwave transformers, by the way, but they are taken from truck battery chargers. So here you can see the circuit in a prototype board. And here you can see our circuit in its final form, in its PCB form. And so, to continue, each transformer is to output 27 volts 60 amps with an input of the CT power which is 240 volts. So as usual, the secondary windings were removed and we added two spires of 35 square millimeter welding cable to each transformer. Now all transformers output 2.5 volts connected in parallel with their phase and neutral being the same across all four of them, uh, otherwise it would be shorted. So now uh, we will melt two metals, each being 1.6 millimeters thick. And as you can see now we are going to use two pulses, with the first one being 90 milliseconds long and the second one being 150 milliseconds long with a 50 millisecond delay between the pulses
and as always as always keep the contents clean it's very important for a good welding and keep the you know if the metal is painted clean the metal as well something pure metal is best you know not painted and all that because um, they, they will not be melted at all so now we melt actually we weld I don't know what we say we melt <laughs> and as you can see they welded pretty good actually you can see it's a clean it's a clean welding so it will take some effort to separate them of course but if it takes effort then it's a job well done you can see that we must bend the metal in order for it to separate yeah that's a good one that's a pretty good one okay and now that we separated them we are, we will try to weld them again with you know with the same options the same uh, pulse durations just putting them there good now the welding is done and you can see it's the same welding actually but you know a little bigger duration would be better because you can see that they separated pretty easily now maybe because you know we found the hole they have and it you know we did not target them as we should okay, now we will try to weld two cylindrical uh, metals of course we will need to clean them so they can uh, be welded better Sure you clean them very well. So using the same pulses, you can see the spot where the two metals welded. Uses the here we go. Okay. So right now you'll see that they actually welded pretty good. You can see how they melted there. And we'll separate them, you know, because we did not like how it went. Actually, it could be made better. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> well, we lost one. Let's try again. We actually changed the pulses. We made the first one 110 milliseconds, and the second one at 100 milliseconds, as before, actually. And now we will try again. Maybe this will do the trick. Okay, here we go. You can see how they melt at that time. It's so instant. Actually. Okay, this seems to be a very good result. You know, and of course, always be careful because the metals are very hot. I don't know how my father could keep it that long. <laughs> yeah, and now we'll try to separate them again. always always you know take safety measures and you can see we don't care about our safety there <laughs> okay so it took some effort but they are finally separated you can see the spots where they mailed it Okay, so as mentioned before, we use four transformers of one and a half kilowatts each. Three of them are at the top of our build, as you can see, and one of them is down here. Of course, we don't have light to see it, but... Okay, here we go. Okay, there it is. That's the four transformer. Okay, so that's our build. Um, as always, we did what it did to learn, uh, to have fun, and to share what we learned with all of you as we also learned by seeing other videos on YouTube and forums as well. So this is it everyone, thank you so much for watching and again 
a huge thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much, guys. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and why not say hello or ask a question in the comment section below. I'm Mike, and I'll see you next time.